Hello, this is History Shorts with the Artifactual Scholar. Today, I'll be talking about the Dominion of New England. In the first decades of the 1600s, England began establishing colonies along the Atlantic coast of North America. These English colonies had strong cultural ties with the mother country and were affected by political, social, and religious developments in England. Despite those ties, the colonies did have a strong sense of self-reliance and political liberty. For half a century, the New England colonies had enjoyed self-governance and limited interference from England. The colonies experienced sustained population and economic growth, but were, in general, lax in following all of the laws and rules put forth by the King and Parliament. By the 1680s, however, royal agents began reporting on the scofflaw tendencies of the New Englanders. As a result, the Colonial Charter of Massachusetts was revoked in 1684. The following year, 1685, King Charles II of England died. His brother, the Duke of York, ascended to the throne as King James II. On coming to power, James attempted to solidify his control over England's North American colonies. He began by targeting New England. Since Massachusetts was already without a charter, the King and his advisors conceived a plan to consolidate the various New England colonies into one vast territory, controlled by an appointed royal governor. In 1686, the charters of Connecticut, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire were revoked, and the colonies were merged with Massachusetts, creating the Dominion of New England. Two years later, New York and New Jersey were added to the Dominion. The King then appointed Sir Edmund Andros to govern over the New Dominion. Andros immediately began to exercise his autocratic power and antagonize the people of New England. He eliminated the col colonial assemblies and greatly reduced the powers of the town meetings. In addition, he imposed new taxes, redoubled efforts to collect old taxes, and began reviewing all land grants that had been made under the old charters. And, in what was perhaps the greatest affront to the Puritan establishment, Andros founded an Anglican congregation in Boston and permitted the public celebration of Christmas and Easter. The citizens of New England were distraught. Meanwhile, in England, James II had managed to alienate many of his subjects. In 1688, in what came to be called the Glorious Revolution, leading political and spiritual figures conspired to depose James and offered the crown to his daughter Mary and her husband William of Orange. The new monarchs ascended to the throne in 1689. When news of the deposition and subsequent abdication of James reached the colonies, the disgruntled population took it. In April 1689, a mob in Boston rebelled against the Dominion government and arrested and imprisoned Andros and other officials. In May, the rebellion spread to New York, where Dominion officials were evicted by the colonists. Andros was eventually released and returned to England. He continued to serve the crown as an administrator, including appointments as governor of Virginia, Maryland, and the island of Guernsey. In the early 1690s, the New England colonies were issued new charters by William and Mary, and the relationship between colonies and crown seemed to settle into pre-Dominion routine. However, the experience of resistance to overreaching royal authority laid the groundwork for future protests and subsequent revolution. This has been History Shorts. Thanks for watching.